everybody, welcome to my channel. My name's Mel. Thank you so much for joining me today for Seven on Sunday. Book Talk made me do it. So this is my first ever Seven on Sunday. I have been watching various of these videos from various different booktubers over the last couple of years and always found them really, really interesting. But I post on a Saturday and a Wednesday and I just didn't feel like I could commit to posting a third video every single Sunday, which is why I haven't done every, any seven on Sundays as of yet, except for today, because it is Vader, as you know, which is a video every day in April. I'm not doing a video every day, but I decided that seven on Sundays, occasionally they're gonna alternate between favorite Fridays because I'll also be doing reading sprints on Sundays and Fridays. But this week I am doing seven on Sunday. This is a Goodreads group run by Grace from G Swizzle. I will put the Goodreads group as well as Grace's YouTube channel in the description below so you can go and join the Goodreads group and also check out Grace's channel and subscribe to her. She is fantastic and yeah I love these topics they're always really interesting. This week's topic is book talk made me do it. I don't actually do TikTok. <laughs> I don't have a TikTok. I don't watch TikTok. Yeah it's just Something I haven't gotten into yet and to be honest with you I'm sort of afraid to get into it because I just feel like it will be yet another thing that I will fall down the rabbit warren of and then another thing that will keep me from doing the various things in my life that I feel like I ought to be doing when I am not scrolling Twitter or Facebook or whatever it might be. So I haven't joined TikTok and I haven't even watched TikTok yet. So. I'm going to do this as booktube made me do it. Quite a lot of booktubers that I watch do do TikTok as well. I'm pretty sure that Grace is one of them. So I feel like they definitely correlate to each other. There are definite crossovers. And yeah, I'm going to do booktube made me do it. So I have chosen seven books today that I honestly probably, possibly would not have heard of were it not for booktube. I say probably possibly because the honest truth is I have no idea whether these are books I would have come across or read without booktube because I have booktube and it has influenced me and so therefore. However when I first started doing booktube and watching and being involved in any way in booktube there were a lot of books that I thought sounded really fantastic that I wanted to read and so quite a lot of books definitely were directly influenced by booktube which is why I have chosen them. In fact a lot of these are in here which is my favorites shelf so that should tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> I'm going to start with the one that I feel like was probably most directly influenced by booktube and that is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. So she wasn't directly speaking to me but Faye from Mystery Date with a Book read this book a couple of years ago and she made a video where she talked about how amazing it was and how everyone had to read it and if you like a certain type of fantasy then you really really needed to read it and I really like Faye, I really like her channel, I felt like we had a really similar taste in fantasy so I felt like even though she wasn't saying Mel, <laughs> I felt like it was directly said to me so I felt like this is a book that I really needed to read. So I have read it, it is a really thick book. It's actually only 800 or so pages long. So realistically, it is not the longest of, the, of books I've ever read, but it definitely is a brick, like it's chunky. But yeah, it's a really, really good book. I would highly recommend it if you enjoy high epic fantasy, if you enjoy whimsical fantasy, I would definitely recommend this book. It's been a while since I read it, so let's see if I can remember what's going on. Basically we follow two um, sort of kingdoms or, or areas of the world that are at odds with each other. One kingdom venerates dragons and one uh, the opposite um, hates dragons and it is seen it, it's because of history and misunderstood stuff from history but yeah so it's about there's two different kingdoms who are at war with each other because they have different opinions on this thing of, from history and dragons and we follow two women from the two different 
factions or kingdoms who follow their storylines and what happens to them and um, how this particular section of this particular situation is played out. That's all I'm going to say, partly because that's all I can really remember and partly because I feel like otherwise I'll be giving spoilers. But yeah, so this is definitely a book talk. I mean, well, I mean, potentially if it's on, I don't even know what is popular on book talk. This is a book tube made me do it for sure. Um, also, I love this cover. I just, it's beautiful. The next book that I'm going to talk to you about is Crescent City. Well, both Crescent Cities really, but Crescent City 1, House of Earth and, and Blood by Sarah J Mass. This was the first Sarah J Mass book I ever read. I had been hearing from people about Sarah J Mass for the entire time that I had been on booktube. She is Becca from Becca and the Books, one of her favourite authors. Uh, so many people love her as an author, love her various different books. I am one of those people now. I have fallen into the Sarah J Mass trash for Sarah J Mass as people like to say, um, pile. Although I have to say I've only read this one and the Akatar series. I haven't actually read the um, Throne of Glass series. I don't know if I'm going to. I, yeah. Let me know what you think. Should I read Throne of Glass? So I don't know if I'm going to. But anyway, <laughs> I read this because everyone was super hyped for it. Everyone was super excited for it. And I was like, you know what? I really think I should just dive in and read some Sarah J Mass. I was very nervous because another book that I have read mostly because of booktube is, uh, well, the Shadowhunter, no, what is the Shadowhunters, but the Mortal Instruments and the Infernal Devices. And I was disappointed mostly by Mortal Instruments. I just, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a Cassie Clare fan, I'm sorry. Um... Yeah, so I was very nervous because people are as in love with Sarah J Mass as they are with Cassandra Clare and it's often the same people who like both. So I was very nervous because I was like, oh, I'm going to hate this. I know I am. But I love it. I love this book. I love this, the second book. Yeah, absolutely loved it. Really glad I read it and definitely because of booktube. This is a, I'm, I'm basically talking about books that I've enjoyed. So yeah, the, the booktube made me do it and I've enjoyed. So I'm not going to talk about books I didn't like. Although booktube made me read Cassandra Clare. Just going down <laughs> the shelf, the next one is um, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Exactly the same story. Everyone was completely over the moon excited about this book coming out. So many people love V.E. Schwab's writing style and V.E. Schwab's other works. People were just completely, like I said, over the moon, super excited about this book and I 100% fell into the hype. Um, I actually didn't feel nervous about this one. It sounded like the kind of thing that I would love. So I didn't even tell you what Crescent City is about, but I feel like I probably don't need to at this point. And I probably don't need to tell you what this one is about, but it sounded, yeah, I'll just say it sounded like exactly the kind of thing that I would really, really enjoy. And I did really, really enjoy it. The writing is beautiful. I don't know if this is how the Ishwab writes for the rest of her books, but I absolutely loved this book. I thought it was stunning. Yeah, really interesting, really fun, beautiful writing, and I really enjoyed this book. So I'm really glad that I read it, and definitely it was because of all the hype on BookTube. So definitely a BookTube made me read it. All right, we're continuing down this way. Um, the next one is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I, again, when I read this book, I read it because it was one of the books that people were talking about a lot and really enjoying mostly when I first started my channel and I wanted to be part of the club. So I picked this one up. I knew that it wasn't her first book. I knew that it was her first foray into adult books. So I knew that it would be quite different from the rest of her books, but it sounded really, really intriguing. So this has been out of the out of the limelight for a while now so I will tell you a little bit about this one. Uh, we follow Alex and Alex is able to see ghosts and the kind of paranormal and she is sent to become one of the members of the Ninth House. The Ninth House is at Yale University and the Ninth House is basically the kind of wardens of the rest of the houses so the other eight houses the fraternity sorority type things that are actually tapping into the um 
paranormal, supernatural. There are other fraternities in and fraternities and sororities at Yale that aren't included and don't come under the purview of the Ninth House. But the Ninth House is the kind of leader of the ones that do have something to do with the occult. And I'm not going to say any more than that. There's a lot going on in this book, but I really, really enjoyed it. It's actually a lot darker than I was expecting. So please look up trigger warnings if you are interested in this book and haven't read it yet because there's a lot. I think it's really well written. But yeah, definitely really enjoyed this one. Definitely read it because of the hype. So another book that I did have on this shelf, but this shelf is not very big, so it wouldn't fit anymore. And I couldn't not have The Lord of the Rings on my favourites or our favourites shelf because I also wanted to include some of Rowan's. So we have The Wise, uh, the Name of the Wind, normally The Wise Man's Fear as well, but he's reading it. But anyway, rereading it. <laughs> um, the next book is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is another book that I read again because Booktube would not stop talking about it when I first started getting into Booktube and made my channel. They were actually, it, it was written a while ago now. Um, it was published in 2011. So I started my channel in 2019. So people weren't talking specifically about this book, but they were talking about the fact that The Starless Sea had just come out. And they were talking about the fact that that was Erin Morgenstern's second book and it had been eight years since she'd written or published The Night Circus and everyone was super excited so this was getting a lot more traction because of The Starless Sea. So I was intrigued to both to read both of them. They both sounded really amazing. They both sounded like exactly my kinds of books. I have read both of them. I do prefer The Night Circus to The Starless Sea. I will say and I'm, I'm sure that many people have said this before and yeah you've heard it before. <laughs> If you are a plot driven reader, I wouldn't advise reading this book. They're really, I've heard people say there is no plot. I don't think that's true, but the plot is very secondary to the writing style. I think the writing style and the sort of descriptions are the r important thing about this book. So if you don't love books that are very much about the way it's written and the um, atmosphere, then I don't think you will like this book. If you like those sorts of things, you will definitely like this book. It's not even necessarily a character driven book because the characters, I mean, the characters are definitely well written, but they aren't even the most important thing either. I'm not even going to talk about what this book is about because honestly, I feel like it's not really about anything. I mean, it is about something. It's about the night circus and it's about these two characters and it's about a magical competition, but it's not really about those things. It's about, honestly, it's about Erin Morgenstern's writing, but I love it. It was, it's so beautifully written. I love the way she has, I love her writing. I love her writing style. This one, unlike The Starless Sea, I feel like has more of a plot. So definitely something that drew me in a lot more. Whereas The Starless Sea, I couldn't discern a plot at all, really. But anyway, I really, really love this book. And I definitely read it because Booktube made me read it. And the final book, the seventh book on my um, seven books that book talk slash tube made me read was An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. This is another book that I honestly don't know whether I would have come across potentially at all were it not for booktube. This is another one that when I first started my channel everyone was raving about and I thought it sounded really interesting. I have really enjoyed this book and the second book which are the only two that I've read from the quartet. I definitely intend to come back to it at some point <laughs> as usual who knows when but definitely on my want to read list. I wouldn't say it was a favourite, not like the rest of them that I've talked about, but I definitely still really, really enjoyed it. I thought it's really well written. It is a young adult story, fantasy story based on, well, inspired by the Roman Empire. Um, and we followed two main characters, Elias and Lyra. And Elias is from the, um, I think they call the Marshals, the Marshals side of the world, um, side of the war. And Liar, a liar, liar. What is her name? Liar is a scholar, and the scholars were um, conquered by the marshals and have been subjugated, and they are rebelling. And Liar's brother is kidnapped by the marshals as well arrested and taken because they think he is one of the rebel leaders, and she is trying to get him back. But yeah. It do, I do enjoy this one. I think it's really fun and really great and really well written. It's just, like I said, it's not a favourite, but definitely worth a read and really good. So, yeah, 
So that was my first ever seven on Sunday and yeah. Thank you Grace for creating this Goodreads group. It is a really fun Goodreads group and it seems like really fun topics every week that I really enjoy loving, enjoy loving, really have enjoyed watching videos from various people who make seven on Sundays and I've enjoyed making this first seven on Sundays. So thanks Grace. Please comment below if you have any thoughts. Uh, what are your seven books that booktube slash booktop booktalk made you do it, made you read? Are they favourites? Did you like them? Did you not like them? Let me know all of that in the comments below. If you would like to leave me a comment but you don't know what, then leave me some kind of weapon, sword, knife, what have you, because of this on the cover of the of An Ember in the Ashes. All of my social media details are listed in the description below. So if you'd like to go and follow me on any of those other platforms, please feel free to do so. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, like I said, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.